this little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide it under a bushel, no, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And I won't let anyone blow it out, no, I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let anyone blow it out, no, I'm gonna let it shine. No, I won't let anyone blow it out, no, I'm gonna let it shine. Watch you shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine This little light of mine I'm gonna let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Let it shine Good morning and welcome to First Christian Church, a community of faith that believes deeply in God's love for all people. Whether you're here in the sanctuary or on Facebook Live, we're glad you found us. A few things about the service before we move deeper into worship. First, for those in the sanctuary, I hope you were able to grab one of our little communion sets as you walked in. If you didn't do that, they are just beyond the doors out there. And for those here, make sure to take the thin plastic layer off first, otherwise you're gonna miss the very tasty bread that's part of this setup. Also, for those at home, you can use whatever you have in your kitchen for communion because we will break bread at the welcome table later in the service. Also, for those on Facebook Live, feel free to share prayers and comments during the stream. For those in the sanctuary, you are more than welcome to use your phone and interact with people online. Just make sure to turn down the volume so we don't get an echo in here. And again, if you have a prayer you would like to share, do that online and we'll make sure to incorporate it later in the service. And if we're unable to do that, we'll share that in the weekly email that goes out on Tuesdays. And for those online and in the sanctuary, feel free to share your location. It lets us know where people are joining us from and reminds us that we remain connected even during this difficult time. Now, as we move deeper into worship, let us be reminded that God indeed welcomes all of us into this space. So no matter how or where you're worshiping this morning, know that we believe God deeply loves you. Now, let us stand if we are able and join together in song. Your mercies are new, your mercies are new, 
Please be seated. Now we've come to that time in our service in which we offer prayers, prayers for our own community and those beyond our community. As I said earlier in the service, if you have a prayer you'd like to share, please do so online. If you don't feel comfortable sharing in that public way, uh, let me know after worship or let one of our church leaders know and we'll make sure to offer prayers for you. And so we begin this week with a particular prayer with a recognition that this Sunday is Reverend Beth McQuitty's last Sunday with First Christian Church of Burbank. There will be opportunities later in the service to recall all of the things that she brought to this 
community of faith and the ways in which we've been changed. But now we pause to give thanks for her ministry and to wish her well. But again, we'll do more of that later in the service. So as usual in this time of prayer, I will say, God, in your mercy, I invite you to respond by saying, hear our prayer. So we give thanks for Beth's ministry and continue to pray for her as she starts a new call and a new adventure. God, in your mercy. We also give thanks for this community of faith that remains connected during a challenging time. God, in your mercy. We also pray for Silva and Verouge as Silva will face eye surgery this Wednesday. May we keep her in thought and prayer. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for those in assisted living facilities, such as Janet, Paul, and Audrey, and all those who seek to care for them. God, in your mercy. We also hold in prayer all of creation, as wildfires continue to plague the West, as heavy waters continue to plague the East Coast, and climate change is evident all around us. God, in your mercy. Also, as the global pandemic continues and COVID-19 cases increase around the world, may we continue to keep doctors, nurses, and all healthcare workers in thought and prayer. And may we continue to keep the families that have been touched by this virus in thought and prayer. God, in your mercy. We also continue to pray for students, parents, and teachers who are trying to make sense and step into the gap during this difficult year. God, in your mercy. We also pray for those who work for social justice and equity during this time. We give thanks for the protesters, the leaders, the activists, the scholars, the dreamers, and the visionaries who work for liberation, inclusion, and justice. God, in your mercy. Also, we give thanks this day for the ministry of Week of Compassion. That's the Disaster and Relief Ministry of the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. As they step into the gap in Haiti and other countries around the world, offering care for refugees, for those suffering from climate change, indeed for all people. God, in your mercy. And finally, we turn back to this community of faith, praying that God continues to empower us and call us to be a loving and inclusive community of faith. God, in your mercy. And now we continue this time of prayer in making space with a video from Brit. Hi, Beth. As you know, I grew up in the Episcopal Church, so the idea of a calling is not something that I was wildly comfortable with or that I felt uh, naturally inclinated towards but I wanted to have us take a moment during Making Space and consider what I absolutely believe to be your calling first here to First Christian Church of Burbank and now on to your future. I think that your calling has been such a subtle and beautiful one and encompasses all areas of your life, not just here, all the ways in which you preach to the margins, both in and out of a church setting. And so with that in mind, I want to play the summons arranged by a friend of mine who recently died, but who during his life really brought me back time and time again, gently to this idea of listening for a still small voice. Same. Will you risk the heart? 
are still stare Should your life attract or scare Will you let me answer prayer in you Beth, thank you for bringing me to this community. Thank you for irrevocably changing this community. And may God continue to bless you and your work on the margins. I now invite you to join me in a time of prayer. God of change and evolution, even as we step into this time of prayer, you are working among us to change, to call us forward, but to also be grounded in your loving and ever-expanding presence. For you've heard us this morning articulate our prayers, prayers for health and healing, prayers for a global pandemic, prayers in the midst of climate change and injustice, prayers of uncertainty and grief, prayers of thanksgiving and joy, we simply ask that in the complexity and diversity of those prayers that you hold us in your love and light. And also this day, as First Christian Church of Burbank faces the reality of change, of giving thanks for a ministry of love, compassion, and energy through Beth McQuitty, we ask, O oh God, that you not only hold this community in the midst of that change, but that you continue to call Beth forward in that same energy and love that we've been blessed with. And God, we then turn from our own community to this world, and we ask that you surround this world in that love, light, energy, and hope. And finally, turning back to us, that you continue to empower us to be a community of love, light, and hope. We ask this all in your loving name. Amen. Our scripture this week is Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 9. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your strength. These commandments that I give you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, and when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. Tie them as symbols on your hands, and bind them on your foreheads. 
Write them on the door frames of your houses and on your gates. I invite you again to join me in a time of prayer. Of prayer. God of ancient words, open these words to us today and to your presence and love. In your name we pray. Amen. Do you remember the last time you were really challenged to change? Really pushed to change? Maybe it was in a classroom setting. Maybe it was in this church. Maybe it was in a relationship where a friend or loved one questioned or really challenged you. Do you remember the last time you were called to change? Well, the truth is, the words you just heard Deborah read were written in the midst of dramatic change. By the time these words were recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, the people of Israel had gone through a significant amount of change. They knew what it meant to be a nomadic people wandering from location to location. They understood the brutality of slavery and oppression through Egypt. They then were again asked to change when they understood God's liberating work in their community. They then experienced change again as they began to build homes and farms in a sacred land. And then again they were called to change as they embraced the weird, odd system of a monarchy. They were then called to change again as people challenged that monarchy. The truth is the people of Israel, by the time the words that you just heard were written down, had faced dramatic change time and time again. And so biblical scholars will remind us that the words you heard are historically known as the Shema, the most important commandment recorded in Israel's history. The commandment to love the Lord their God with all their heart, their soul, and their strength, and to teach that commandment to generation after generation. Because Israel understood that in the midst of dramatic change, they needed to ground themselves in a core principle or value, and this was it, the Shema, that they were loved and they were called to love. Let me repeat that value again, that they were loved and they were called to love. You see, because in the midst of all of that dramatic change and shifting that went on, that they needed that reminder. Because as the world changed around them, they needed to be reminded of what held them, what grounded them, and what value would call them forward. Change is a reality of the human experience. As I invited you to remember a time in which you were challenged to change, that might have been a positive experience, it might have been a funny experience, it might have been an awkward experience, it might have been a very hard experience. But my guess is that there was some value, some ethic, that in the midst of that change kept you deeply grounded. And my prayer is this morning that you will add the Shema, if it already hasn't been a part of your values or ethics, that you will add these verses into those circumstances of change. The commandment to be loved and to love. Because as the world and our circumstances changed around, change around us, we need that reminder. We need that call, and I believe we need that invitation. Because just look at the past 18 months of change. This church knows it well. Who would have imagined two years ago we would have three different cameras situated around this sanctuary? Who would have imagined that we would be exploring Zoom and Facebook Live and YouTube on a weekly basis? But in the midst of all of that technological change, 
There was a value or ethic that kept us grounded. The command to love and to be loved. The Shema. That no matter what shifted in terms of our community and the way we did things, we continued to love and be loved. And today, First Christian Church stands in the midst of another shift and change. And that's the reality that Beth McQuitty is leaving. After seven years of a loving, energy-filled, funny, life-giving ministry, we take a moment to say goodbye and to face the reality of change. I know personally for me, I'll no longer be able to look over at the communion table and see Beth break bread. Our young people on Wednesday evenings will no longer be able to get on Zoom and do one of those fun game nights with Beth. Our elders will no longer be able to sit in a meeting with Beth and be questioned and inspired by her vision for the church. The truth is we're facing change. And just like the people of Israel, that can be challenging. It can be dramatic. It can be hard. For Beth has done some pretty dramatic, loving, and inspiring things. Now, usually I try to memorize all of my sermon. But when Beth gave me a list of all that she's done, not everything she's done, but a snapshot of what she's done, I thought, there's no way on earth I can memorize that list. Thanks for that challenge, Beth. So let me run through some of the things that Beth McQuitty has done in the midst of the, our community. Autumn Awesomeness, the outdoor festival, community festival that occurred in our parking lot. She secured a joy grant from Yale University that allowed this community of faith to explore joy, wine, and being a community of faith. She helped us connect with Burbank Pride, that while it didn't happen because of the global pandemic, we still anticipate that it will happen. Her connection with PFLAG, taking the youth of FCCB and Seguil to gun marches and to Pride, Sunday night youth groups, youth dive-in movie nights, family dive-in movie nights, youth family promise movie nights, joint Seguil events, who can forget Worship on the beach one Sunday. Family pool parties. The Dodger Day. Fun videos with kids. Craft days. She also keynoted at Lock Levin, our camp and conference center. She took youth to the regional youth golf event. She invited me to get into a dinosaur costume and dance around the sanctuary. Thanks, Beth. During COVID, she continued to expand the idea of family ministries with a social justice movie night, with virtual family holiday parties, with an Easter egg, virtual Easter egg hunt. She planned a progressive book readings to kids with Nellie. She continued to have youth game nights. And she occasionally delivered bags to families. There was even one Sunday in which she delivered donuts to families to remind them of this community of faith, faith's connection. She initiated the first Burbank Virtual Baccalaureate online. Do you all remember that? That was in the early days of the pandemic. Virtual family draw nights, a drive-by celebration for our graduates when they were unable to gather in person. And the list can go on. The truth is Reverend Beth McQuitty has left her mark on this community of faith. When we enter this space, when we gather online, her ministry, her words, her energy will live through the ages. This community has been forever changed because of Beth's call, commitment, and ministry. Thank you, Beth. But that's where change comes in. If there's one thing I've learned about church and ministry, things constantly change. 
Clergy move, people move. New members join, new staff people find a way to inhabit this space. Just like the people of Israel, we too, as a community of faith, face change. We face change today and we will in the coming weeks. But my prayer is that when we face those difficult and sometimes joyous days of change, that we turn to the Shema, the ancient words recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, that ancient invitation that calls us to be loved and to love. For it was a vital part of Beth's ministry. It's a vital part of First Christian Church's identity. And it's that value and ethic that will call us and move us forward. The reminder to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, and strength. And just like Beth, to teach our children that very value. That as we move forward, indeed in some ways grieve Beth's leaving, we turn to the Shema to remind us of God's profound love. As we move forward with a new understanding of youth ministry, May we re be reminded of the Shema, the command to love. As we reimagine our own community of faith moving forward, may we re be reminded of that ancient value and ethic, to love and be loved. It might sound cliche and oversimplistic, but there was a reason those words were recorded in the book of Deuteronomy, that in the midst of great change and shifting, there is a value that grounds us and holds us, that calls us and moves us. And that's the call to love and be loved. In the midst of such change, may we hold that value and ethic close to our hearts. And Beth, as you face change in your own ministry in life, may you be reminded of a God that courageously loves you and this community of faith that loves you as well and will hold you in thought and prayer moving forward. Thanks be to God for a little bit of change, but thanks be to God for that value of love and grace that in the midst of change holds us, grounds us, and invites us forward. Amen. Good morning. We have now reached that moment in our worship service where we break bread and practice communion. All are welcome at the Lord's table as God's love is available to everyone. For those of you participating virtually, I encourage you to gather your communion elements. And for those of you here in person, please prepare to carefully open your prepackaged communion cup. As some of you know, Andy and I first visited this church a little over three years ago. On that fateful Sunday, we apprehensively pulled into the parking lot, slowly walked on the sidewalk toward the front, and then quickly took our seats toward the back of the sanctuary. It was the first time we had ever attended service at a church together, and at that point, we had been in a relationship for nearly 12 years. Although we both attended church growing up, we weren't sure if we'd ever find a church that would warmly welcome us as a couple. As we quietly waited for the service to begin, Beth came over and greeted us. We talked about how we found the church, our backgrounds, and our relationship. After our conversation, I remember being left with the feeling that we had found a church where we could openly worship as a gay couple without fear of judgment or ridicule. That feeling was reinforced 
when we were warmly welcomed by the interim pastor, Stan, Sam Sr., Wally, and numerous others after the service during coffee and conversation. Speaking on behalf of Andy and me, we will truly miss you, Beth. Your passion for justice and equality, your commitment to serving this community of faith, and your creativity when it comes to finding new ways to share God's love have been inspiring. You're one of the main reasons that we decided to join this church, and we have loved getting to know you these last few years. Now, in the same way that Beth welcomed Andy and me on our first Sunday, I now welcome you to join us as we come to the table this morning to remember the sacrifice of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Ben. <clears throat> One of my favorite things about the disciples of Christ is our value of the table. Because this is where we practice what it means to love each other, to open our arms to one another, no matter where we are. I did not expect this, sorry. And so one last time, no matter where you are on your faith journey, remember that you are beloved, that you belong here. And as we all come to this table, we remember that night that Jesus shared his last meal with his friends. He took some bread and he broke it, saying, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat in remembrance of me. And in a similar way, Jesus took a cup, and after pouring it out, he gave thanks, saying, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And now, family of God, I invite you to take whatever bread that you have and to eat it. And in just one moment, Todd will lead us in the Lord's Prayer, and we will drink the cup together. Let us give thanks for this beautiful and wonderful table of inclusion hospitality, and love. Good morning, everyone. Uh, please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Hello. I'm going to tell you all about the wonderful things that are happening at FCC. We have so many things going on. I'm in about half of these groups, so um, I can tell you that they're just wonderful. We have a Bible study every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, and basically it's um, sort of a line-by-line -line, um, Bible study, and we have a wonderful group of people there, and we really get into it, I'm telling you. It's like um, we did our creation story, and then we started talking about other creation stories and comparing them, and it's just become a wonderful, wonderful group. Um, it's on Zoom, so you can come and be there safely. So we invite everybody to join that. We have a weekly reflection group on Thursday, and it starts at 8 o'clock. We have people from other states that come on Zoom with us so we get a different perspective. We usually try and share something that inspires us. Um, and usually we talk about things that are like either in the news or something that's come up. Or it can even be a bus ride where we saw a decision made on the bus that we want to discuss. So we have a lot of really wonderful, deep thinking there. We have a great bunch of people that really have bonded, and it's become a great community. So again, that's on Zoom, so you can safely join that group. We have Homemade Thursdays, which is a wonderful expression of doing for the less fortunate. 
And um, from one to three, they cook food in our kitchen. And then uh, from three to six, they deliver it to the homeless. So this is a wonderful opportunity as well. We have also monthly activities, such as BTAC is the first Saturday of the month at 9 o'clock. And um, you can go there and you can make sandwiches and things for BTAC to hand out to people that are in need. We have Holistic Hikers, which is the third Saturday of the month, and you can spend spiritual time out in nature with our pastor. Um, and, and again, that's outside, so that's a little more safe. The LGBT group meets the last week of every month, right after church, in person, but we can always put up a computer and anybody from out of state or whatever, we can have you join us for that wonderful lunch and be a part of us, our support for each other. Again, a lot of really wonderful people, so I invite you to enjoy all of that. Those of you coming in person or being near the church, please, we have a food pantry outside where you can drop off food for people to take it that are in need. Um, so I hope to see you, and everyone is welcome. Thanks, Deborah. A few other announcements. The youth have one last opportunity for a youth game night this Wednesday with Beth, um, so look for information about that. Also, you heard a list of a lot of activities happening uh, here at First Christian Church. Those go out in our weekly email as well. If you're not part of that email group, let us know and we'll make sure you're included because that contains all the login information that you might need. Also, this afternoon, there are two softball games that are being played. Um, it's a busy day, so if you're on the softball team, check in with me after worship because we're trying to figure out who's, who's able to make it. So, um, and then along those same lines, we are celebrating Beth at a party this afternoon at 3 p.m. at Dave and Sandy Engel's house, which is at 1020 West Harvard Road. Come stop by. There will be burgers, hot dogs, veggie burgers, and all kinds of good food, and an opportunity to say thank you to Beth in person. Um, and then finally, I mentioned the Week of Compassion earlier in the service. A week of compassion is our relief and development ministry. If you've wondered ways that you can help out with the disaster in Haiti, with Afghan refugees who are being resettled, or a number of other things that are happening in our world, week of compassion is a great way to contribute through that. You can do that on our website, and it's the Disciple Mission Fund, and that money will go to those who most need it. Now, that's a lot of announcements. Um, I hope you were able to Keep in line with all of that. Beth, I'm going to invite you to come forward and stand at the communion table. Now, as I mentioned in the sermon, and we've mentioned throughout the service, this is our opportunity to say goodbye to Beth, not forever, but to wish you well on your new ministry. And I'm simply going to remind the church, this church, both online and in person, of Beth's concluding statement and her statement of call. Beth explained, my mission and vision in ministry is to be an active agent in co-facilitating safe space for people to engage, explore, question, practice, and grow in their faith. These safe spaces are cultivated in the belief that all are welcome to the table. I have experienced what it feels like to be an unwelcome stranger in the family of God. My ministry is deeply rooted in the belief that no one is a stranger. Beth explains, as a pastor, I realize that Everyone I serve, lay or ordained, is a minister and an important creative part of the body of Christ. And as we grow together, we stretch each other and continue to discover what it means to embody the words we say at the table each week. Beth, you've left your mark on this community of faith, on that table, and we are deeply grateful for what you've done, and we will hold you in prayer going forward. Now, there were lots of people that wanted to be here this Sunday and to wish you well, so we captured a few videos of people that want to wish you well and say thank you. Thank you, Beth, for not only being there for our church, but also being there for our family. We're going to miss you so much, and I can't wait to see how your next chapter in life goes. Thank you for always making me smile and laugh when I needed you. Thank you for all the fun game nights and activities. We'll, we'll miss, miss you, Beth. 
Hey Beth, I'm so sorry to see you go. I, I love you so much from the bottom of my heart and you have shaped the woman that I've become and I am so appreciative of you. My mom and my sister and I are so grateful for you and we wish you the best of luck in your future adventures. Hey Beth, thank you for the movie night, the game night, and the autumn awesomeness. Good luck on your new position at your new church. We're lucky to have you. Hi Beth, I just wanted to say that I love you so much and I'm so excited for what your future holds. You're gonna do great. Beth McQuitty, I'm so delighted that Brandon has stopped and told me about what's going on in your life. And we, of course, reached back to Bur First Christian Church here in Burbank and the great influence you were and you still are, and what a blessing you were and are to other humans. God bless you in your future work, and may it continue on and be as effective now as you were when you were in our roundabouts. You are loved and needed and treasured. Thank you. different kind of cruel to have somebody watch something like that right in front of. <laughs> Thanks, Brandon. <laughs> um, you know, I've been thinking about this moment for the last few weeks, knowing that um, it was just around the corner. And, you know, I've said goodbye to churches before, but not like this. Seven and a half years is a long time. We've all grown and changed as individuals, and as a community. When I think about my own life, while I've been at FCCB, I have I've gotten married, divorced, I've had a significant surgery, I found love again, I lost a parent, and it's here at this church that I got ordained. This was the first church that I've ever gotten to work at that not only affirmed or welcomed me as somebody part of the LGBTQ community, but also affirmed it. When I first came to this church, I told Steve Beauregard that First Christian Church of Burbank was the church that Burbank needed and didn't know it needed and that I was looking forward to be, being a part of a community that would continue to live into what that might be. As a minister of family ministry, I have gotten to walk with you through some of your biggest moments too. And I wanna say that I am so honored and thankful for those moments and will always treasure those in my heart. As a congregation, the change we've experienced. We've gone through two different pastors, or we've had two different pastors. We haven't let one of them go yet. <laughs> and we've had two interims in seven and a half years. <laughs> we've lost and we've grieved and we've found ourselves as a community in moments where we've wondered, are we gonna survive this? And in those moments, we clung to change. The idea that things won't always be as they were, but we've held on to hope and taken steps in faith, believing that that thing that Brandon was talking about, the anchoring ourselves in love, holding on to that hope and holding on to that truth has led us to where we are now. A community changed. My hope for you as I leave is that you will continue to welcome change. That you continue to ask hard questions. Once in a while to stop to look at this table and ask, hey, we keep saying that this table is open and we are open and welcome, 
but are we really living into that in the ways that we could be? To allow those hard questions to penetrate your hearts and to challenge one another so that First Christian Church of Burbank can be and continue to be the most loving congregation that we can be so that people may experience refuge, love, hope, and healing. One of my greatest hopes is that you all continue to love each other, and not in just being nice to one another, but to know each other, to invite one another into each other's homes, to ask questions, to bring each other food when we're sick. We're all busy. What makes a church community so special is the ability to know others that you would otherwise not have known, to anchor yourself in that love, and to give and receive that love in return. First Christian Church of Burbank, forgive one another, embrace one another, and challenge one another. Help each other see things that perhaps others don't see because we all carry a unique experience and perspective, and we need each other for that. First Christian Church, thank you for hiring me when I thought I would never be hired by a church because of my sexuality. Thank you for allowing me to grow, to explore my call, to support me in my ordination, and to allowing me and for allowing me to be part of your lives, to baptize you, to go to the hospital with you, to hear your stories. I will always hold you deeply in my heart, and I am so grateful for the time that I've shared with you. My hope is that you are better because we've been in relationship with each other and I have gotten to serve here. And even more than that, my hope is that as I leave, you will be better. Not because I'm gone, but because of that change. Because change is inevitable, change is good. I'm so hopeful for what this congregation will continue to grow into. It is already a beautiful place, but my hope is that you are not satisfied with that, that you step forward with faith, love, and extreme hospitality to be the church that you are called to be. I love you all and thank you so much. And I invite you to stand as you are able to sing our last song together here. God is in the people.
Family of God, go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the suffering. Honor all persons. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. And may the love of God, the light of Christ, and the power and communion of that Spirit be with each and every one of us. Let us go in peace. Amen. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. And I won't let anyone blow it out, no, I'm gonna let it shine. I won't let anyone blow it out, no, I'm gonna let it shine. And I won't let anyone blow it out, no, I'm gonna let it shine. I, I wanna watch you shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine.